The Inzone Buds design definitely has a PS5 vibe to it, even if Sony may be aiming them more for the PC market. The black and white model makes this more evident, whereas the all-black variant I got is considerably more understated. The current design of the PlayStation retains its gentle curves, although it's not as overt as the in-zone headsets. I would contend that this sleek, polished approach is at odds with the case. Unlike everything else on the shelves, the bulky treasure chest style shape is a solid rectangle with a significantly greater footprint. However, because of its sloping back, it can be placed neatly on a tabletop, which is convenient since the USB-C charging connection protrudes from the rear. That's fantastic, however I'd much prefer have a case that is portable than one that looks good on my desk. Nonetheless, everything is of the high caliber you would anticipate from this place, with a solid hinge holding everything secure and a gratifying snap to the lid itself. The USB-C 2.4 GHz dongle has a place within the clamshell, which thrilled me as well. I was taken aback by the degree of comfort offered when I lifted the buds out of the casing and placed them in my ears. When I saw the very abrupt and sharp curves on top of each bud, I was first concerned about comfort, yet they fit into each ear perfectly and could remain undetected for extended durations. I forgot the Sony in-zone buds were even there after 10 minutes or so, proving that often the finest designs are the ones you don't even notice. Naturally, there are four more sets of earbud tips in different sizes to ensure that you are receiving the correct fit. Although the Sony in-zone buds are meant to fill the gap between regular earbuds and gaming headphones, they fall short in terms of functionality. In the realm of gaming, earbuds must be quick, have a quality microphone, and provide directed audio some depth. In my testing on both PC and PS5, there was never any worry about latency. The 2.4 GHz USB-C connection definitely holds up its half of the bargain, syncing on-screen action to oral cues swiftly and accurately. Similarly, the directional audio maintained a realistic soundstage and provided a good degree of accuracy to different spatial cues after it was configured using the same odd ear picture method as the Sony InZone H5. But the microphone isn't as good as you would expect from a pair of headphones designed specifically for gaming. This is a typical microphone that you would find on a daily device. It works okay for the occasional call when you're out and about. But while I was using the in-game chat, conversations were often lost to silence. Next, we have the functions that millions of people rely on after using a regular pair of earphones for streaming music. While ANC, a long battery life, Bluetooth connectivity, and simple music controls are all significant advantages, the in-zone buds also struggle in this area. It's important to note right away that Sony hasn't let their ANC games slide in this instance. This is still the same very potent active noise cancellation seen in high-end versions such as the XM5S or WF1000XM4. I would even argue that the blockage provided by this technology is a compelling argument in and of itself for choosing the in-zone buds. Walking the dog next to a busy roadway was undoubtedly much more tranquil as a result. Battery life is good as well. Using a 2.4 GHz connection, you can get 12 hours of use out of the buds themselves and an extra 12 hours via the charging case. Sadly, iPhone consumers are dealt a serious blow. Many smartphones, computers, and even the Nintendo Switch are incompatible with Bluetooth LE which is used to connect wirelessly to a device without the USB-C 2.4 GHz dongle. This implies that you will not be able to use them as regular earphones on an iPhone, MacBook, or some older Android smartphones. This is an odd decision made by Sony, given that Bluetooth currently has such a wide range of compatibility. Because of this significant trade-off, I have no intention of recommending the in-zone buds to iPhone users. Touch controls are available on the in-zone buds, and each side has a neatly mapped set of instructions. They were also very sensitive. All it took was a single touch or double tap to get the desired outcome. Additionally, you may alter this mapping using the in-zone PC program, which serves as the location for your EQ modification. Although some of the functions are a little annoying, the Sony in-zone buds have excellent audio quality. Having never previously encountered a breadth like this from tiny in-ear buds, I was taken aback by the immensity of the soundstage. The increased area allowed for an amazing amount of detail, especially in the mids and highs, as well as well-handled conversation and effects. 
Eastward's jingles blended in with the lively music and ambient sound effects with a rich precision that seemed well-balanced and lovingly textured. Conversely, more competitive games like CS, Go had directional signals that were easy to understand and follow, along with a quick, snappy reload tone. The bass isn't as loud as it would be in a full over-ear gaming headset, but Dead Island 2's explosions and gunshots still have a lot of impact. The Sony InZone buds really shine in these higher frequencies. Power, but not necessarily detail, is what it is. While typical of gaming earphones, the lower ranges were substantially flatter than those farther up the spectrum, with notably less distinction to individual noises and a muddy tone overall. I wouldn't suggest Sony's product to most gamers, even though these drivers have some good audio quality and provide a level of comfort that is difficult to ignore while using in-ear buds. The limited connectivity is a major issue here. For $199.99 this earbud has to be worth it, and given that you can buy earbuds for significantly less money that have many more uses in your daily life, it's hard to justify. Android users can survive if they prioritize active noise cancellation and long battery life in their earbuds. iPhone users do not need to apply right now. But in this case, before making the decision, I would at least wait to hear from the Pulse Explore Buds. December's offering seems to be the superior choice on paper since it has specific gaming features including mic mute and volume controls, simultaneous Bluetooth connections, and 3D audio for the PS5. So guys, this was my complete review of Sony InZone Buds. Hope you found the video informative, and if you did, please give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.